for fun. Oh, jeez. Um, no, nah, I'm good. On the 26th of April, 1986, near the city of Pripyat in Ukraine, a disastrous catastrophe had taken place. The reactor Unit 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant had broken down, which led to its explosion and subsequently to radioactive contamination of the vast area. At the beginning of February 1987, nine months after the disaster, a team of scientists from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, which measured radiation in this exclusion zone, received signals that proved the existence of people operating in this area. Also, various unexplained anomalies had been discovered which could have resulted from a type of radiation previously unknown to scientists. Scientists from the Moscow Institute, experts from the General Nuclear Inspectorate of Ukraine, and the rescue staff decided to send a special research and rescue expedition immediately to clarify the source of the anomalies and to save people who might still be alive. The group was commanded by Alexei Tokovsky, a rescue specialist, after determining the exact coordinates of the facility, the group reached the place and got inside. However, all people were separated and lost contact with each other in unexplained circumstances. Well, hello. How's that for an introduction to a video, right? Welcome to Swan Chernobyl Unexplored. And this right here is something I'm excited about because it covers two things I'm very fascinated by. Number one, just the research and exploration of abandoned facilities and buildings. But number two, just uh, Chernobyl in general. I'm a sucker for that stuff. Documentaries, books, novels. Let me at them. Get a torch here happening as well. Oh, torch. I mean, I call it a flashlight, so Euro Bros, apologies. Just know that even though I'm saying flashlight, I do mean a good old torch. Goodbye, Alexei. Well, if we are Alexei, then, uh, you know, apparently they were expecting us here. It's exactly what you want to read when you walk into a weird, abandoned place. They took my home away. Now, this looks a bit too neat for it to be blood, so at the very least, there is that, you know, silver lining. Ooh. Okay, uh, <laughs> you know what we should do? Maybe lower the volume a little teeny tiny bit because that almost made me shit myself just now. The Swan, by the way, reminds me so much of the Darn Initiative from Lost, which is an awesome show. Just, uh, you know, it kind of kept going down, I guess, quality as it went on, sure. And the ending was very unfortunate, but... Ah, oh, those early seasons, man. You to interact. We got a note here. Since the incident, the telephone has been ringing less and less. I hope that Professor Kaidanov... Kaidanovsky knows what he's doing, especially now that the anomalies keep getting stronger and the patients are getting more detached by the day. I myself barely managed to cope mentally. By the way, Russian bros, I apologize for every single butchering of the names that you'll probably hear me pronounce here. It's just something to expect at this point, but, um, you know, just a heads up. So you were supposed to be ringing, right? Some weird sounds out here, though. Oh, now it's ringing. And it does seem as well that, um, <laughs> the um, hallway that we came in from no longer exists. That's good. Guess we're just stuck here for good! But why? Alright. Oh, you're in you as well. Good. So, hallway that we came from is gone. That just showed up after the explosion. So we have one of those games where everything just changes around you on a whim. TV is not working, that makes sense. What is this? Ooh, detector. What do you do, my friend? The K-type? Yeah, that name again. Ionizing radiation detector. Detects radioactive pollution and it shows its level. So that sounds actually very good. How do I equip this? Because, um, <laughs> that sounds very important. 
I've left a detector in the locker for you. It'll come in handy when that damnation appears again. Please remember to turn off the light when it's closed by and don't ruin it, please. I hope we will meet again. Alive. So that's a very important read for... As if it weren't enough, the telephones have started exploding. <laughs> You're not wrong about that. Um, that's a very important note then. So this detector could apparently pick up this damnation. And whenever it does appear, our light better be off. Okay. Duly noted. Now I'm hearing a weird... Jingle? Is that the right word for it? Yeah, it's like a jingle. Coming from in here? Oh, probably from this radio. Yeah, jingle's gone now. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I got no idea. Ah, Comrade Lennon. Well, safe unavailable. We'll make it available. You know what I'm saying? Cassette? Cupboard? Ooh. Well, I guess we'll check this out. Why? Oh, good. Enter a password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we don't have an idea whatsoever right now, so... Hopefully this cassette helps us out. To our revered comrade, Kai Danoski, with kindest regards. Dear Andre, our friend. We your party comrades, would like to express our pride of your membership. Your input is invaluable. You are one of the founding blocks of our ever-growing community. We are deeply convinced that your work will keep on strengthening both our friendship and the party's might. Thank you for your arrival at the official decoration ceremony. Please remember, you can always count on us. Long live the Ukrainian Socialist Soviet Republic. Long live the USSR. Indeed. Long live indeed, huh, Lennon? Let's see. So we have our tape player here. Her medical case was exciting and nightmarish at the same time. One. I have no idea why, but this monotonous and seemingly funny melody made this woman appear from practically nowhere. Three. It is a contrast of sorts. How a completely innocent sound was a foretelling, or an omen of the atrocity to come. 9. Horrifying beauty. 4. Um... <laughs> what? The melody that we heard? The little jingle that I talked about? Well, I'm glad I turned it off then. If it's an omen. Here we go. So, 1, 3, 9, 4. Okay. Again with this Kaidanoski guy. Oh, that's gonna open up the safe too. Swan Factor. I am convinced the existence of the Swan Factor since the beginning I believe it is achievable, and I can obtain it. If that were not the case, this whole project institute equipment personnel, none of this would have existed. Everything comes down to one thing. There is one goal to it all, and a discovery discovery and extraction of a factor which makes each individual case unique among all the medical cases collected here, and which displays its own abilities. The military is expecting results. As long as they're paying, the work will continue. The binding capsule is a remarkable device, just like the mind reader. Since the beginning, it was our most ambitious project, even though it was and still is created in an extremely difficult time for us, and it is not made to create, but to destroy. When it all got out of control and the damned incident started to cause all those sick events, we had to look for rescue. Who would have helped us? The party? The ministry? Fuck them. Okay, we have at least popped open this safe here. <laughs> We're still good. I'm still not convinced everything is fine here. We got a key. Which should... The key should lead us to that room that was locked early. Don't do that. Two hours later. Okay, I don't know what to do. I can't turn it back on. I'm not sure if that pissed it off or not. <laughs> she 
she's still there, though? Oh, she's still there. Um... Please, stay off. You're not there. You're not there. God, it stayed off this time. I'm just gonna run to this freaking lock door, okay? We're good, we're good. Let me in, let me in. Just, just let me in. Okay. Um, wh what am I doing? That better be a capsule that takes me to a different place. A safe one. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, what about it? Loading files. Control room binding capsule. Uh, calibration description. Ooh, it's a lot. The mind reader system is one of the inventions coming from Professor... Yeah, yeah, the director of the Swan Institute. In recent years, the patient's visions have become so deep and vivid that they have begun to seep through to a new parallel dimensions. They run alongside a reality and to imprint on them. The need for understanding these visions and the essence of their evolution had pushed the Institute's personnel to construct a special device that would allow the user to travel to such dimensions. So this binding capsule is to get into the minds of... Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Calibration. Okay. Guess we've done it. That was red when we walked in. The mind reader connection procedure was successful. Uh, okay. Does that mean I'm gonna see even more weirder stuff? I mean, that tall woman was enough for me, I would say. Why does this say run on the floor? Yeah, this is an extension, by the way, because the, the hall had ended here originally. I mean, I don't gotta run, really, do I? You're just trying to scare me. I don't hear any footsteps behind me. I think we're fine. Don't follow this path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much like you said, don't run over there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't open just doors randomly on me, though that actually does freak me out more than the writing on the walls. Okay. Control room. Twenty november 1986. Case description and observations. Patients with numerous first and second degree burns on the whole body, but not displaying any damage to the neurological system. A lighting attractor... A light... Lightning. Lightning attractor particle was discovered in the patient's body, causing her to get hit by lightning several times per day. Lichtenberg figures colored brown and bluish red form on her whole body. The patient possesses a special ability to summon ball lightnings that follow her, follow her steps. So she's Storm. Okay, we have another key. Alright. Well... Do we know of any other thing that requires a lock so far? Or a key so far? Not really. Oh, this one. Chief Nurse's Room. Mm. Hmm. That can't be good. 27 January 1987. It is getting worse. All employees are living in fear. We do not have control over anything anymore. Patients used to get locked up safely behind armed doors, but it is us who have to stay behind them now. The whole ward was a joke from the beginning. Humane conditions and good care have never existed here. These people's diseases made them made us see them as wild animals, and now everything turned against us. The worst thing is, there's no escape out of here, and the hunt has already begun. What hunt? Okay, window's gone. <laughs> Same thing. Alright. Look, you can still open the door, right? Yeah. We're fine. Ah, oh, jeez. 
Um, no, nah, I'm good. Don't really care to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to keep it on the entire time. If you don't mind. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, don't do that. Oh, God, that was right in my ear and it fucking... Dude, fuck that. <laughs> there was like this crackle in my right ear that just, it was like removed from everything else in the game. Like just sudden like crackling in my ear just scared the shit out of me. Like, oh. <laughs> what is that noise now? Like, I don't think I want to play anymore. Like, I think of, you know, you guys have seen enough, right? I think you've seen enough. Don't follow this pad. I mean, it seems like it's the only one I gotta follow now, though. Turn back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now I turn around and something's gonna be there, right? No. Ah! Um, but then what do I do? <laughs> nah. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> 